you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In you, all things consist. Thank you. 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 Thank you for translations. Thank you for movement in the spirit. Thank you for physical movements. Thank you. 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 Hallelujah. Blessed be God forevermore. Thank you for purging this morning. Thank you for cleansing this morning. Thank you for forgiving every sin. Thank you for removing every condemnation. Thank you. that as we make our appearance before you this morning, every red crimson garment is washed and made pure. The Bible says many shall be made white and tried. Many shall be made white and tried. I said many shall be made white. He said, even if they be red as crimson, we shall be pure as wool. Let them be red as scarlet, we shall be whiter than snow. Thank you for purging our hearts. Thank you for purging our lives. Thank you for making us worthy to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. Thank you for the heritage that we have received. The baton we got yesterday at the Kingdom Life Series. Thank you for the transfer of mantles. Thank you for the transfer of mantles. Thank you for using your servant so mightily to release mantles of graces, mantles of ancient, direct and indirect mantles. We bless you. You are just so good to release these things to us. And that's why we bring praise and thanks to you this morning. We say blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' matchless name we have given thanks. In Jesus most beautiful name we have given thanks glory to God in the highest please welcome your neighbor to church this morning especially welcome every one of us into the presence of the Lord I don't know how to continue this morning but I will just see what I can do within 10 to 15 minutes let's see if I still have any time at all Pastor, you pardon me. I bet that I could not stop that worship. A call to new beginning. The Lord has been speaking to us. That is our season of new beginning. And last Sunday was very instructive for me, particularly when Pastor wrapped up the ministration Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3 Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1 Mark chapter 2 and verse 22 as many scriptures that can be projected this morning by the multimedia please just go ahead I won't really go into the reading this morning because of time but I believe that these are scriptures that most of us are already familiar with In Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says God created the heaven and the earth. It's the story of creation. The earth was formless and it was void. The Spirit of the Lord was hovering on the face of the deep. And in verse 3, the Bible says, Elohim declared, Light be. Let there be light. Let there be light. That light that was called forth in that beginning, as we have heard it said many times, is not the light of the sun, is not the dawning of the day. It is the light that was produced by the very life of God. That light is the very essence of God. In fact, that light is God. This is the record we have received of him, a testimony that cannot be faulted. John was speaking that 
God is light and in him there is no darkness. So when Elohim said light be, what was literally done was God appeared on the scene. God made an appearance. God's light that comes out of the inside of him. The Bible says in him was life and the, this life is the light of man. And so the light that was called for, that, the light that appeared or that made an appearance in Genesis chapter 1 was God. God himself showed up in the midst of the hold, if you want to put it that way, because when God created the heaven and the earth, it was, it was not void, it was not shapeless. We believe and we have that testimony that whatsoever the Lord doeth abides forever, and every good gift and perfect gift come from above. So God will not create a voidless, shapeless, hopeless, scattered everywhere kind. No, he doesn't do, he does all that he makes. He's perfect because he himself is perfection. And so the voidness, the shallowness, the hopelessness, the darkness that was found in Genesis chapter 1 and in verse 2 was a season. You can typify it as a season that encroached upon God's creations. And God had to make that season expire. And that season expired by the introduction of himself. God introduced himself into an hopeless situation in the form of light and a new beginning emerged. And so, you may want to call what God began to do in verse 4, 5, 6, all the way to the end of Genesis chapter 1, the purging, the rearranging, the sorting of everything that was out of place. In Matthew chapter 21, from verse 12 to 14, Jesus entered the temple and he found those who were buying and selling. This was the house of God. Imagine walking into church, God forbid, this morning and then you find people selling yam tubas, pepper everywhere. That was exactly what was going on in the temple. And Jesus went and got a, I mean, a proper whip. And the Bible says he flogged them out of the temple. Every one of them. He sorted the temple and said, My house shall be called the house of prayer for all nations. Why do you make it a den of thieves? He, 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 it was an order or a reordering of things that were out of place. And so there was a season when those who were selling and buying commercials were thriving in the temple. I was wondering if there was no space outside of the temple. All the market stores had been booked and no other space was I mean, available to the end that commercials became, you know, um, came to the zenith, the peak of human civilization at that time that spirituality had gone so low to the point where the house of God can be converted to a marketplace. And Jesus said, no, a new beginning must emerge. And in introducing that new beginning, he introduced himself. He didn't get, he wasn't helped by any man. Or any, he, he himself appeared on the scene and drove out all, all who were selling and buying. And he said, this house shall be called the house of prayer. A new beginning emerged. And so, but for a new beginning to start, there needs to be a revelation. And light is what makes revelation possible. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 13, like I said, I may not be able to read too many scriptures for the sake of time. Light exposes all things. If you're in the dark room and it's night and there is no light, it will be difficult for you to find your way. It will be difficult for you to actually even look for something and, you know, get a hold of it. But the Bible says when light comes on, it exposes all things. Nothing hides in the face of light. Darkness cannot hide in the face of light. So what God needed to do to create a new beginning was to introduce light. Was to make, and I mean, to, to make all men see. And to, to make himself, you know, actually see the extent to which all things have gone out of place. You may not necessarily know how bad things have gone for you in life sometimes or how things are out of place or how family values have, you know, have diminished and things have gone around, you know, gone out of the way, you know, in your life until revelation, until probably you see another family or you go to another place or you are introduced to a new knowledge or a new people or you work in a different environment and then you begin to realize that the way you have been doing things, you know, is actually obsolete and you need to make a change. When a man is living in the jungle all by himself, he may never know that there is, 
<laughs> another means by which man can travel other than trekking if you are living at the backside in the village you will not know that there can be a possibility of you actually getting to a destination faster and quicker than you know walking on your two uh, 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 two legs until you are re reintroduced and trust me the the limit of your uh, of your ascendance in life is contingent of, of how much of revelation you have and so if all that we know in this part of the, you know the world is um, uh, planes flying and we have not been introduced to the jet technology or how things go into space at a faster speed we will never know how fast things can go into the heavens or into the, the, the skies up there because we have not been introduced to that technology yet. What am I trying to say? Revelation gives birth to faster rise in life. You attain a higher heights, you go by speed, you take a flight even into greater things. But the reason of the new, newer technology or new things your life is introduced to, even in your field of, 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 of knowledge, until you are introduced to i mean there was a time when all that we needed to do as students you know back then when i was still doing my own engineering and it became hard for me when i got to the office because we were used to drafting with our hands we would draw the map and the plans of a building and of a road and all that manually and we would draw the whole thing it would take hours sometimes in my room i put my drawing board on my leg i can go from 6 p.m to 6 a.m drawing and we can go days drawing those architectural plans and you know all those alignment for roads and bridges and all that days and days and days will pass because that was the only thing we knew all of a sudden we got out of school and realized that there were tools there were applications on computers that can make your work so easy to do things that you would do in 48 hours can be achieved you know within hours two hours you are already done because somebody introduced us to autocad and many other softwares that before this introduction men labored and so it will take you longer time for you to get into certain places if revelation is taken away from you peter struggled with god in the book of Acts chapter 10 i have not taken anything unclean in my life no he was arguing with god and god said rise a voice came from heaven kill and eat and said lord no i am circumcised we the circumcised we don't take anything unclean and he was struggling even though it was spiritual he was struggling in his mind he was putting a hold on god he was stopping god man can stop god you can hinder god you can slow god down from doing what he wants to do but the reason of uh, 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 being in the dark of what god is doing even around you in your season and so what god is saying to us this morning is that there are several lights that is beaming in our direction beaming in our health beaming in our finance beaming upon our families there are several light of revelation that i'm bringing in this season to you just like the one that was shared with us yesterday at the kingdom life series i mean if you miss that series i don't know what to say but you will do yourself a word of good if you can go back and catch the light and the revelation that was dispensed to us yesterday and that there are certain journeys i mean that told us or that made us realize that there are journeys that we make in life faster and even to greater heights much more than our predecessors and progenitors to the end that the places where the people we call great in scripture stopped their own journeys are actually our own beginning point i mean when pastor eat that note yesterday i i was driving but i i mean i i almost packed you know to pray but i just had to continue driving and i was just praying that lord this is light that i've never seen before in this manner that some of the whole i mean generals in faith that we look at their lives and we are desirous of you know emulating the things that they did even when it sounded on the note of jesus that said ah, greater works he would do because i go to the father this man paid several prizes of being in the mountain top fasting and praying they did all of all that they needed to do in faith and died and god said where they ended <laughs> just like where elijah ended like pastor said was the beginning of elisha's ministry that was a revelation that i don't have to go through everything that elijah went through if i can receive that light of revelation i can begin my journey where he ended oh abraham stopped god blessed him in all things 140 years 
God had blessed him in all things. But God said to us yesterday, where Abraham ended. No wonder Jesus said, a greater than Solomon is here. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days. He saw it and was glad. When Jesus came, he, he, he basked, you know, uh, in the light of Abraham, even in the greater light. When John the Baptist came, he basked in the greater light of Elijah that, 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 that came before him. And when, when John the Baptist was, was going off the scene, the Bible says the least now in the kingdom of God <laughs> shall be greater than John the Baptist. Who was the greatest in the whole testament? And so with my God, there is no better yesterday or two or two Lord John your with God the light shines every morning and when a general dies and we feel oh that is the peak of Christianity God is saying I'm just about to start a new order of things the order and the kind of things that your word has never seen that I've never known oh we celebrate great men of God the against you know the pastor the boys and god is saying oh you think you have seen things in your days i'm going to do things that when the ears of men hear it it will tingle things that have never been done before i am going to do with you because with god there can never be a better yesterday it is light that reveals to us the new beginning that god has called us onto. but you know what we don't pour new wine I'm running ahead of myself this morning into old wine skin. Mark chapter 2 and verse 22. Jesus said you will not get new wine and then pour it into old wine skin. Because if you do, the old wine skin cannot take, cannot contain. <laughs> the fabrics of the old wine skin cannot contain, cannot house the new wine. The Bible says the old wine skin will break. It will burst it will pour forth the new wine everything will amount to waste when you want to pour new wine you look for new wine skin that has the capacity the properties of his fabric can receive even the newness in the same way as the mouth of the lord has proclaimed a new beginning looking at the fabrics of your hearts looking at the fabrics of your life looking at the composition of your mind of the things that you receive which is your heart and your mind that you receive a new day and a new beginning is he still living in the hold the bible talks of the children of israel in Acts chapter 7 god had saved them with a strong and mighty arm he stretched forth hand and delivered them from the slavery in the land of Egypt. And they had been walking many years in the wilderness towards the Canaan land. And even though he had delivered them from the hold, the Bible says the hold was not taken out of their hearts. Because in their hearts, they were still walking back towards Egypt. At every point in time, at every little temptation and trial, they would look to Moses and Aaron and say, why did you take us out of Egypt? We were enjoying the onions and the cucumbers, the, the, the good of that land, we enjoyed it. Why did you take us out of Egypt? We would rather stay in slavery than be in this wilderness. And no wonder the Lord was wrought with that generation because even though they had been delivered from Egypt, physically Egypt was out of the way, but in their mind, Egypt was still a god. Egypt was still a way of life. Egypt had become a parcel of them, a part and parcel of them that they could not let go of. And God could not bring them into the newness which was Canaan land. Only Joshua and Caleb had their mind and their hearts transformed. They had their fabrics changed. They changed the color of their... I mean, see, the Lord said to me, if the president were to walk into your house, imagine you get a notice that the president is visiting your house today. Are you even sure you'll be in service? That was exactly what the Holy Ghost said to me. Will you even come to church this morning? You will get the best of cleaners. You yourself will supervise that work to ensure that when the president comes, there is no dirt there everywhere. In fact, it's possible for you to sweep the streets where you live on to the point where it gets to your gates. You will make sure everything is properly clean. Everything is sparkling clean because the president is coming. And the Lord said to me, I am greater than the president. I have declared my incoming to my people in this season that I am appearing to them in the form of new beginnings. How much of preparation have my people gone into to, to receive me are we still walking with the old mindsets the old wine skin because the truth of the matter is what the mouth of the lord has declared just like pastor was saying yesterday the gift and the callings of god are without repentance when god drops a blessing he doesn't pick it back 
the graces and the anointing he has released upon his generation he is not asking angels to come out come to the earth and take it again and no because they are not needed in heaven this is where everything is needed this is where the sign and the wonder <laughs> i and the children that the lord has given me we have a sign and wonder it is in the world not in heaven not in heaven we don't perform there are no lame no blind in heaven there, there is no suffering in the kingdom of God there is no nepa in heaven God himself is the light of that city and God is saying I can through you for the many years of darkness that has perpetuated itself even in your economy in your land in your nation I can use a man just one man to bring an end to it to declare a new beginning to the end and Nigeria indeed can become great those things those giftings those talents will not the only talent and gifting that is exposed in heaven is the talent of worship and praise we don't do any they don't do any other thing in heaven they don't pray in heaven they don't ask for daily bread in heaven it is only on the face of the earth that these things are needed so if there's any gospel that preaches that no we are just sojourners and pilgrims on earth and we live soberly and quietly and then we just pass on without leaving any imprints and then so that by that we can find our way our keys to the doors of heaven that is a very wrong gospel the bible says he wants to show forth the praise of him that has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light and that is in this world god wants to be proud of your life god wants to do a new beginning with you he wants to start a new New order. Ah, I prayed a prayer yesterday during the course of that meeting. Lord, the kind of things that you have not done with my generations past, start it with me. Let me be a progenitor just like Joseph was a progenitor of something new, something great, something that had never been done before. That is the kind of order of miracle, the kind of journey that I'm believing God for in this season. And truth be told, the Lord has started doing it already. It's not until pastor comes in and begins to share testimonies. If you're here and you are not receiving new beginnings yet, it, it is, you need to check your fabric. It, do you still carry the old wine skin? Is Egypt still living in your heart? Is doubt still in your mind? Are you still doubting the word of God? What is your level of preparation? How prepared are you to receive what God is saying the bible says in romans chapter 4 and verse 12 talking about abraham he said he is then also the father of the circumcised who not only are circumcised but also those who follow in the footsteps of the faith that our father abraham had before he was circumcised abraham had a kind of faith before his circumcision and i began to look at the faith of abraham so the bible is saying was that abraham received the newness he received a new beginning because he did certain things there was a preparation that abraham had the level of preparation abraham had that made him receive all that god promised and god said it will can it will not only happen for abraham it will also happen for those who though they may not be circumcised but they are walking in the footsteps of abraham they are walking in the footsteps of Abraham. What are the footsteps of Abraham? One of them this morning is the one you find in Genesis chapter 18. Is a simple word this morning. And verse 1 and verse 2 downwards. And Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 also emphasized that particular action of Abraham. This was a man who had been barren for many years, expecting and believing God. And, and the miracle seemed elusive to him for so long a time. But he didn't let it dampen his level of preparation. He didn't let him remain in his old clothing, old wine skin. No, Abraham put on, put up, and put on himself the new man, the new man that is renewed in hope, the new man that had hope and high expectation that led him to start giving praise to God. The Bible says there were two. I mean, there were strangers that visited Abraham. Two men. He looked up and saw them from afar. And the Bible says they came into his household. Abraham washed their feet. Abraham brought them to the best of, you know, his setting. Abraham uh, placed before them the best of meal. I mean, I was reading that story this morning. I was wondering, how could you go into your farm? And because you have two visitors, you didn't go to a store to buy them food. You didn't go to the closest fast food. There was a level of preparation. Abraham told his servants, get the best of, of ram in the two people i mean how much do they want to eat to kill a whole ram how much can two men eat they 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 went to the beginning to 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 i mean to to the the very the very essence of honor the very picture of honoring men they went there and picked the ram they killed it they burnt it they 
part it in, in ways they cooked it and i mean that was a lot of i mean i can't I, and i said to myself i'm sure they had stale food in the house i'm sure mama Sarah could have some things in the store and abraham could have easily said go and warm it you know just prepare something let them just eat and then let them just go no abraham gave them the very best even though he didn't know they were angels uh, hebrews chapter 13 and verse 2 says uh, that we should be hospitable enough that's how some people entertain angels unawares so abraham didn't know don't tell me he knew that they were angels he didn't know that they were there too too and that was the day the barrenness in abraham's life ended forget all that god has said to abraham there is always a, tr a trigger for the blessing forget all the encounters that abraham had had with god there is always a point of trigger for the new beginning forget that god has told him i will make you a father of many nations went to the sea shore counted the sun went to the heavens i mean looked up to the heavens and counted the stars god can speak many beautiful things and give you many many promises there is a point of trigger for the manifestation of that blessing that if a man misses that point if a man should overlook that point that blessing may remain in the realm spiritual forever and ever the, the point of trigger for Abraham is the entertainment of those strangers and when they were well fed and they had eaten enough they looked at Abraham and said this barrenness according to this time of life according to this we have brought an expiry to your barrenness Abraham we have brought an expiry to your barrenness but the reason of what you have done they could have gone they were not coming to the house of Abraham please don't get the scripture wrong God was sending these men to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah God was sending them in another way Abraham saw them from afar and said come into my house that's 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 some sensitivity in the spirit I, i've shared it here before and i'll say it yet again there, there was a time of my life when i know pastor has preached over and over about you know giving to parents and honoring parents Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 1 honor your father and your mother that he may live long and may be well with you and all that but i was not practicing it judiciously i just do it after sadly but there was a time of my life i picked that key 2020 pre-COVID, I picked up that kid and I said, Lord, no month, no season will pass without me honoring my parents the way I've heard it preached by my pastor. And I went on that journey and the Lord has been with me on that journey. And I realized the stability, the stability I prayed for, the trigger of that blessing was in that key. Many of us have had so many keys, so many revelations. There are people sitting here this morning that God has spoken specific words to that you don't know that may be your trigger for the new beginning. I picked on that word and it just felt as though I entered a season of ease financially. The job did not change. My, I didn't grow taller. I didn't grow bigger. But everything about my finance completely changed by maintaining that level of consistency. See, in this kingdom, there are keys that opens door. If you find your key, if you prepare well and, and, you, and, and you prepare your heart and you, you have readiness and eagerness and God release a key and you take that key, it might be to come to church early Sunday morning just to come and prepare the place in prayers before everybody comes. You are in here praying praying for the service it might even be in your house but God just gives you a certain instruction and you are there doing that instruction you are following with your heart that may be your trigger to your new beginning I entered that room and, and I stayed there in fact some weeks ago I just told my wife I said this new beginning that the Lord has, has declared to us I said you know what it's not just we were just discussing about offerings and I thought I was the only one doing it and I said this with all humility before God I said you know what there is a level that I've been but I think there can be higher levels you know in God you can never get to know the highest point our God is so deep you cannot you cannot get to his depth he's so high that we cannot get to his final height there are always new revelations by the day and I said to my pastor has been preaching about raising his offering you know what I said I have made up my mind I'm raising my offering to this particular you know level and God helping me that's what I will continue to do in every service and by the time she opened her mouth and said to me said you know what I actually made up my mind to start doing it earlier this year and when she told me the figure it was even times two of what I had made up my mind to be doing I was like wow wow and I told her, I said, even our sons, when we are coming to church Sunday morning or anytime we are coming, make sure you deliberately prepare their offering. It's not just give them anything and they just come to church and just drop anything. No, no. I, I found a key. I have listened to the word and I'm taking it as my key, my trigger key to my next level, to my new beginning. I said, make sure two Sundays, I mean every Sunday, make sure they always package their offering specially before they come to church. I'm not saying this because, you know, I just want to preach. 
message. I'm saying this because the Holy Ghost laid it on my spirit to teach this this morning. I'm not saying this because church needs money. No, no. I, and I say this with due respect to everyone who gives to the Lord. You know, but I'm saying this as a personal experience that the Holy Ghost has given me the liberty to share. I have only done this in two Sundays, Pastor. I've only done this in two Sundays. I know I had to rush out of service before service even ended last Sunday. And, and the Holy Ghost said to me, because you have picked this key, I will begin a new beginning for you indeed. Two notable things in one week for me. Two notable things. A brand new car that I did not ask for. I mean, it just came out of nowhere. I've never used a brand new car in my life. I say with all humility, I've got several cars. But I mean, a brand new one. It landed without me asking. I, I went for a meeting from that service here on Sunday for a meeting. It was a meeting I went for. In that meeting, I was given a land in Lekki where I did not even ask for a whole land. I said, this is yours. I'm saying this to somebody here. I'm not here to boast myself, but I'm saying that when God releases some of these things, for as many who believe and walk in it, there is, there is a trigger. There is a trigger. And you cannot just come to church and raise your hand and sing and praise. If you're not ready to obey and live by the word, it will not happen the new beginning will not start but as many who will believe and will obey god whatever is the instruction is given to you to practice it i'm telling you he's not a man that should lie he's not the son of man that should repent as he said it he will do it as he mentioned it he will make it good he said behold i have received a commandment to bless and when the mouth of god says it's a new beginning he has not lied he has said it he will do it and as many who will hold on to their own triggers whatever it is that you have abandoned that you know that the lord has given to you to do as an instruction please do it please do it it may be your offering it may be going to the poor it may be giving to the needy whatever it is it may be praying for your pastor it may be visiting those in prison whatever it is make sure in fact it might be that you go into politics and make sure you you stand in there and you don't lose your rank and you don't lose your christianity you don't lose your faith but you stay there for the cause of god <laughs> stay there and do what god wants you to do <laughs> because the vision is for an appointed time <laughs> don't it hurry wait for it the bible says he said it will surely come <laughs> if it's the mouth of the lord that has spoken it he said it will surely come and it will not hurry can we bow our heads this morning and give him all the praise is the giver of all things is the doer of all things his mouth has declared a new beginning if he has said it is because he meant it but he's waiting on you like abraham to be deliberate about your sacrifice to be deliberate about the life you live to be conscious of the things you do you don't just wake up in the morning and just go out no you don't just do the service of god anyhow you can be diligent all your life trust me i have been diligent at work diligence at work is not the only thing that brings the the blessing it is the blessing of the lord that makes rich and has no sorrow i want to give god praise this morning because you are making a commitment eh, to give your very best to every the instruction of the lord to give your very best in attention to the instructions from high let's bless the name of the lord for what we have about this morning this is a clear word from the throne room of heaven this is a clear word from the throne room of heaven. This is a clear word from the throne room of heaven. Nothing can be clearer than this. There is nobody here who has not had God. If you have not had God, then you are not on the same frequency of faith with us. If you have not had God, then you are not in any capacity connected to the network of heaven. This is a clear word from the throne room of heaven. Speaking unto every heart. I just wanted to Give him all the praise and thank him for the quality of the word he has sent into your heart right now. Ah, bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Bless his holy name. Father, we just want to say a big thank you. And thank you forevermore. In Jesus' mighty name have we prayed. Praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the living Jesus. You see, I give God a praise because of the mightiness of his power. And of his grace in compensating the righteous and blessing us with what is needed at every junction I don't intend to preach today and I don't intend to even uh, say much today I just want us to uh, my intention was just to you know uh, go into what is necessary and you know let's close the service 
I was studying yesterday, praying up until about 2 a.m. I was on my feet, walking around, praying and studying at the same time. That was three things <laughs> at the same time. But you see, the Lord began to speak to me after the whole thing, during and after. And um, I came to church this morning. As I got to my office, the Lord continued speaking to me. And he started continuing speaking to me about this new beginning. And what he was telling me was very profound, just one thing. He said, my people, there are things to do that if they don't do it, many may not step into it. And I said, Pastor Ebon, oh yeah, let's go through the scripture. Only one scripture God gave me. Only one for this service. You know, most times, Daddy will speak to me about the service and tell me what is to happen in the service. And I said, Pastor Ebon, what was the scripture we read today? We went through the book of James, chapter number two. And I want everybody to please turn your Bible there. I think we just need to read it to the end so that we all have an understanding. James chapter two from verse 15 to the end. That encapsulated everything that we had today. And then verse 22 was the word. As I was even stepping out of the office, we still went through the verse 22 again. Ah. I was coming down into the church boiling in my spirit. Boiling. As in, you know, not burning or boiling. <laughs> I came with a temperature of the spirit terrific. On that verse 22. That today, God will speak to his people. James chapter 2 from verse 15 to the end. I want the whole chart to read. And I need a loud reader at home, Mike. I will read as fast as possible. As loud as possible. And as clear as possible. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. So let us all read together. One, two, go. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith. If it had not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But will thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Yea, ye say, Ye see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by, by works when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. <laughs> that was the scripture we read now. I mean, we're upstairs. Yes or no? Okay, that was the only scripture we read. And the Lord began to speak to me about the new beginning. And he was speaking to me about today's service. And that is said unto me very, very clearly that there are things to do to position the people for this word. To believe that word, to say, ah, I believe that prophecy, I claim that prophecy, is not sufficient. If there is nothing new that you are doing in your life, to package yourself for it, if there is nothing new, there is no shift. In your regular life, please forget it. The new beginning may never redound on that person. Understand what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody said to keep doing the same thing the same way and be expecting a different result is madness. It's another definition of insanity. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That is to say, if you keep doing it the same way, you will keep getting the same re So if I want a new beginning, I must do it another way. And I've, I mean, the, the church, the GCC is heavily worth thought. We've had the word to the point where I've told you that you initiate God's action by your own action. Am I right? 
if you are going to see something new, if you are going to do something new, ladies and gentlemen, it starts with your own action. It is when you do it that God goes into action to do it again for you. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, I, I said this to you. The new beginning is going to be orchestrated by your homeworks. What is that instruction? Abraham entertained those three angels, I mean those three uh, divine entities, of course killed and, um, I, I mean, killed the calf and all that and fell them and all that. But you see, we must understand, ladies and gentlemen, that is the work added to his faith. And that is what God is talking about here too. Abraham had to slaughter his son in a figure, in his mind. That is the work added to his faith. Rahab, she didn't just say she had faith. She had to, you know, do some things to preserve, to preserve the life of those people. That is the work added to our faith. Please understand, what is it that God is telling you to do? There is always something to do. If you are sitting and you're like, there is nothing to do. <laughs> uh, somebody may be here, maybe probably you are not even doing the normal. Some people have even forgotten, I mean, they have forgotten the place of being tied. Forget it. I mean, no matter how much pastor preaches, forget it. They're tied? No. <laughs> some people have even forgotten the place of being first through. Some even, the offerings is what they find in the bag on Sunday morning that they just put there. There is some, you know, imagine what pastor told me when he said, if a president was coming to his house, how he would prepare. I was clapping where I was seated there because that what hit me so much. It hits me so much. Anybody that is coming to church, please wear the best of your clothes. Always appear the best. Let your very best be put forth to meet with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, if a president is coming to my house, I'm telling you, I will hire people that will clean, not even my street alone, all adjoining street. Uh, all the gutters will be washed. I will pay for it. <laughs> and then if I can do that externally, imagine what I would do internally in my house. If somebody catch it, and that is just the president. How much more the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Ladies and gentlemen, you know what God is talking about to us this morning? God is saying something very instructive and very mighty. That what is the preparation you are making for the manifestation of that which he has spoken in your life? One of the things I've discovered about this God, he does not lie. <laughs> the number of miracles I saw this week, they were terrific. I shared with that one or two yesterday when I was preaching. As in heart-shaking miracles. You understand what I'm talking about? See, I must let you know, ladies and gentlemen, this God, the moment he says, he me, this is what I want to do. And I say to that person, it comes to, in fact, it will even tell me it will happen so, so, so day. I will tell the person. And that same day, the thing will drop. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Please understand, this God does not lie. To change any life, to change any whatever, he, as far as this God is concerned, though, <laughs> he has all the power. You know, there is this song I sang at the miracle service. That song keeps coming to me again and again. A Yoruba song. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing he cannot do. All we need to do is to prepare ourselves and package ourselves for the wonders. So God said unto me, he said, look at that verse 22. He said, so, even faith is made perfect by works. Without works, faith is not perfect. That is the perfecter of faith. Is your work, your corresponding action. What and your corresponding action? A lot of times you have not felt anything, but you are taking that step. Do you understand? I'm talking about to show God that look, I am in faith. <laughs> and then God goes into action. Your corresponding action is what moves God. Into. I've told you, you initiate God's action by your own action. I don't want to go into scriptures to show us. We have always shared it again and again. So, what is it that you are doing? Last year, and I've always, you know, one of the things I started doing, I give consistently and I give you know, in ascension. So, I was sharing with Adekemi, we, we, we share very closely about this. And she told me that she has learned something about that and she's doing it. That's very good. So, we share figures, probably. I, I said, so how much are you giving? I said, so every Sunday now, my offering does not go below this. I said, that's beautiful. Do you know what I'm talking about? So, we just share. Only high alone, I share that with anyway. So, we shared, then we left. And she, she, she started this year, she kept on. That was what the husband was preaching. So what the husband was saying is true. I can testify to it. And the amount she gives, and when she told me, I was like, ah, I didn't get me. <laughs> are you sure that not every profit you are making, you are clearing into, <laughs> into church <again. laughs> So she was, and she, she made up her mind that, look, if this can work with Pastor Femi, it can work with me. And then she started doing it. Now, the husband also joined, as he said. 
I was, I was, um, was it two days ago or thereabout? Even this morning, as I entered into this place, the first word the Holy Ghost gave me that this is the season of the reward of the Latin words. As I sat down there, they understand what I'm talking about, and that word has been coming for quite some days now. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, I, where, where I was today, I was mean, I, I said to myself after service, they should call Pastor Tommy for me, that I wanted to tell him this, and this, and this, and this, that this is the season. Now, please, I didn't know what God was working out in their lives. I didn't know anything. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, when the Almighty God knows what you are doing consistently, you may do it for seven months. I think I have started since January, taking a leave, following the full step. Now, please understand, see what God is doing now. To give somebody a line lucky, I mean, you agree with me, even if he's lucky for 10. <laughs> that line is not in the thousands of naira. I don't know. I don't know whether I'm talking to a rich church. <laughs> I'm not talking to real people here. You can't find, if they said they said a land in this Lagos, 50,000 naira, eh, you can draw the map and locate where the land will be. Even mentally speaking. <laughs> what is it? It's not safe. Is least, it's not safe. <laughs> is that what the country I'm talking about? So, and the lucky we are talking about now is the most central lucky that they give them. Now, and with the, I think, was it last week Sunday? I was preaching, I said, I saw a brand new car. Can you remember? And I said, Except I'm not a prophet, that's when this will not happen. That this will happen this month. I saw a brand new car. Now, see, that is a brand new car. But God is telling me right now that Koti Bari. Ah, if you look at you. Is that what the Kajara I'm talking about? You see, when the Almighty God speaks, I said that car is not Okumbo. I said what I saw is brand new. Ah, let me give somebody a chacha here. Oh. Are you ready? I said, what's the instruction God gave me? As I was coming downstairs today, I said, Lord, you know what the Lord told me? I said, Lord, I'm increasing my offering now. And I, I package my offering on, in, on an increase again. You get what I'm talking about? And I said, Lord, henceforth. And you know, once I enter a level, me, I don't descend. Because the part of the righteous like a shiny light. That shines what? Brighter and brighter. So I just added, mm, bass, you got added to my offering. And I said, there, that is my offering now. Now, please understand, ladies and gentlemen, so what he was preaching is what we are all doing so that we also can continue seeing the goodness of God. Uh, with due respect, of course, we cannot be talk, talking about some things here, but I must let you know, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about these things, they are not things that people are, pastors are waiting for people to give. and No, no, no. We are doing it so that it can be well with us as well. Because the word of God is no respect of persons. The other thing I'm talking about, it is the doer that is blessed, not the, not the preacher. Please understand. <laughs> There is a gift to preach, but to do, there is no gift. You don't understand what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. You yourself, you have to apply your heart of obedience to do what? To carry it out. If you don't do it, you don't see it. That's how it is. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a big word for somebody. You are stepping into your new beginning right now. And God is saying there is a word, there is a work, there is an instruction that God has given you. There is something to do that God has told you. And that thing triggers you. Just imagine that preaching. That's exactly that James 2 that God spoke to me this morning. And he said, go to the house and tell them there's something to do for their faith to work. In the word he has given over the season. The new beginning. I was stepping out of the office and said, Pastor, let's go to that verse 22 again. Ah! That word as it was burning in my spirit. He said, even faith is perfected by your... So if you do nothing, there's nothing that faith can produce. If somebody can jump to God, there's something to do. Ladies and gentlemen, to take you to the next level. What is that instruction? It may even be to poor people around you. Please do something. It may be go and be inviting people to church. Listen, no, it's not everything that is financial. Ladies and gentlemen, no, not everything. It may even be start and be praying harder. Or start and be doing, do you understand what I'm talking about? You see, there's something to do. You can't keep living the same way you lived in January and be expecting a new beginning this August. No, something must change for a new order of resort to enter. Am I talking to somebody here? Let me hold on to somebody. Say, tell the person, say, something is changing today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and a new order of resort 
is entering into your life. In the name of Jesus. You know, the Lord just told me something right now. Should I tell you? All around, aye, aye, ungu gu lelishi. Deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we bless Your holy name. You deserve.
Jesus right now. Many of you are having strange feelings all over your body. It's the power. It's the anointing of God going through your bodies. It's going through your bodies right now. He's healing your bodies. He's fixing your lives. It's the power of the Holy Ghost. right now the power of God is heavy here for there is a sweet sweet spirit in this place and I know that we the spirit of the Lord. Wherever you are right now, begin to picture your expectations. I see the anointing walking on visions. I see the anointing walking on visions right now. Marco Sato Your visions, your capradiga, your goals, your objectives, your ideas. The power of God is resting on them right now to execute them. The anointing is resting on them right now. Marco Shato.
restoration in all areas of losses restoration 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 ah I feel my soul something Wherever you have all hands lifted up right now, the healing power of God is all over your body right now. Bodies are being healed right now. Demons are coming out. Spirit of infirmities are vacating your lives. Oppressions are leaving your domain. Your home and your territory right now is receiving total emancipation by the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. is moving all over this place right now all hands lifted all hands lifted right now thank you Jesus my life will never be the same my life will never be the same I am so sure area you have just been touched and healed right now that pain that itching effect that blood 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 revision god has just cleared it off check it right now check it right now the inner power of god is going through people's body right now somebody you are having some some it, it comes at times like a numb sensation on one side of you the power of god is healing and taking that thing away right now he said check that place right now check that place right now it's been a consistent feverish feeling check it right now the power of god is and if you have any tumor any growth go and check it right now there is a disappearance of that group i rebuke joint pains right now i rebuke joint pains right now i rebuke arthritis right now romanticism i rebuke in the name of the internal organ failures i rebuke you right now in the name of jesus you are healed in your bodies yes all hands stretch forward right now i heal your hands right now financial flows i command on your hands financial you know when i was when we were worshiping i saw a bag and i was wondering what is this and i heard in the spirit this is money bag and it was handed over to somebody there is somebody here in the name of jesus supplies are open unto you i said supplies are open unto you by his divine power i said supplies are open unto you powered supplies powered supplies powered supplies powered supplies the lord said for as many as had visions you had dreams you had ideas you had goals you had objectives you had tasks you had targets you had things to achieve that is said as you are walking out of this auditorium he said help has risen for your visions he said go after your visions now and you will see implementation one thing you have just received is the grace for implementation Oh, I think somebody will give him praise. 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 You know, oh no, oh no, you know, I, I received so many uh, testimonies this last week. But there was one that made me laugh. A couple came, they said they would not marry. So, a woman who had received the miracle went to tell them. He said, I got my own miracle in that church from the island. And the woman brought them. So I, I looked at the, the lady. As she came in, I said, you're my man at the problem. He said, Pastor, <sighs> you know, and I don't talk like that because I rarely tell people this, this, is, this is the problem. But in this case, I couldn't hide it. I said, it's your mother. Your mother is a witch. And she has vowed that you will not marry. So I lay hands on her and broke all her powers. I said, in 10 days, 
all matters about your marriage will be settled. I said, this lady had somebody for 20 years. And the matter was not. The ladies came on Friday, said, when it was on the ninth day exactly, everything was settled. He said, Pastor, this is the man now. I brought him today. Go ahead in now for marriage. I looked at the lady, I said, well, I, and I looked at the man. You know, it's, and I asked, I said, for how many? He said, 20 years. 20 years problem can be solved in a moment by the Holy Ghost. In a moment, I don't know for how long you've been trying to build a house and you could not build it. I don't know for how long you've been trying to be a landlord and you could not be. What is that vision? The Lord said, as you are leaving this place, I'm under the anointing right now. And I'm telling you, that he said, as you are walking out of here, I'm blessed she that believes. For there shall be a performance of this word. And the Lord told me, he said, there are special angels in this meeting. He said, as you are walking out of here, by the power of the Spirit of God, you will begin to walk in implementations. You begin to walk in executions. You begin to walk in a powerful achievements. You begin to walk in fulfillments. And in the full actualization and realization of your dreams, you believe that let the amen be the most received in the house. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout the loudest hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the angels crying holy to the land. Holy, 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 God Almighty, who was and is and is to come, who was and is and is to come, all the angels, all the Jesus, by the time I'm seeing you next week Sunday, New Rukola, the Jesus Christ in Nazareth, I see you with a testimony of your house. I see you with a testimony <laughs> of restoration, of blessings, of His goodness and kindness. I see you with restoration and elevation. 
your hands are cool. The anointing is on you. The anointing is on you. Oh, come on now, hold up, hold up. Take it in the name of Jesus. It's the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. How are you? God bless you. In Jesus' name. They ran away to America. What happened? They are over. They did not see me again. You know I'm on speaker. God bless you. To God. God bless you. All the angels. God bless you. Come on, shake me. God bless you. The anointing passes across to all of you. You are blessed. To the land who sits upon the throne. Holy, holy. blessed by this message. For more information, prayers and counselling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080-33-706-938 and 080-2828-1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at dgccintl stay blessed